going on everybody welcome to the phil singer games character spotlight with mike and brock i'm mike and i'm brock and today we're talking about two classic champions of the galaxy characters the royal overlord and amazonia oh, i almost nailed both of them getting him in frame but i screwed up and our our topic we're gonna veer away from uh the game and actually just talk about our first ever wrestling matches that we attended, okay. like our cards, both an indie card and a major card. Okay. Big, bigger promotion. Sounds good to me. Yeah, just mix things up just a touch. Mm hmm. Sounds good. It was, it was neat. The, uh, now, as, as you know, I'm a big fan of KD, which, mm -hmm. which is craft dinner, or you guys call it mac and cheese down there or something. Yes. So the wife found these little things. So she got me jalapeno mac and cheese. Ooh, that sounds good. And she got me buffalo chicken mac and cheese. I like that too. Spicy buffalo wing mac and cheese. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to try to find that. Looking, looking forward to those. We used to have flavor packs up here. Uh-huh. So you just add it to your... Yeah, your yeah. Mac and I loved it. But they sold out, but there were so many of it, so much of it being shipped to the U.S. because it was only available in Canada. <laughs> All kinds of people. We had we had the spicy buffalo chicken wing, jalapeno, butter chicken, and cotton candy. Nice. And I'm like, cotton candy? Mm. All the others were pretty good, but cotton candy, uh, I drew the line. I don't, at, I don't like regular cotton candy, so. I, I drew the line at cotton candy. <laughs> 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 my my go-to with the uh, Kraft mac and cheese is a can of either tuna or chicken. Mix it in. So good. I call it tuna noodle surprise. Uh, just it's just good. regular KD. I throw some ketchup on it and just yeah. eat it. I've done buffalo sauce in mine. It's pretty oh, yeah. good. I do that all the time. Hot sauce in my KD. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a normal hot sauce, or uh, I like I like the ketchup. These I, I've had these before, but never in the in the the little serving size. No, I would need like four of those. Yeah, my serving size is usually the box. Yeah, me too. <laughs> serving size? Oh, one. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And then I feel then I feel horrible after I just ate the whole box. <laughs> Yeah, whenever I make it for the family, I make two boxes, a box for me and a box for everybody else. <laughs> but I don't understand why I gained three pounds yesterday. <laughs> right? We had a uh, Texas Roadhouse for dinner tonight. It's pretty good. Fun? Yeah. Had some country fried chicken. It's pretty good. Okay. Mashed potatoes. What did I have? Oh yeah, meatballs. Ooh. Wife made some big meatballs and then she made a quinoa salad. So well, somewhat somewhat healthy eating. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Texas uh, Roadhouse is not that. <laughs> just, just a little. <laughs> yeah, it was heavy cream and everything else that you shouldn't eat. <laughs> Deep fried and <laughs> goodness and, and love. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've, I've eaten more than a few times in the States, and I notice your portion sizes are just a little bit bigger than everywhere else on the planet. Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> yep. Like, like your quarter chickens are half chicken. <laughs> it's the whole chicken. Let's, uh, let's get this underway here. All righty. Let's start off with, say, Amazonia. Okay. There she is. Now, the first Amazonia had, she was what, a six distractor? Yes. No stats. Yeah, and no stats on the back. Now, my rule of uh, um, where wrestlers couldn't, managers couldn't do outside interference and they didn't have a stat in the back because mm -hmm. you know, I figured they you know, weren't wrestlers of any sort, I lifted that for her. If she's an Amazon. Yeah. And she's drawn tough looking too. Like she's a big, powerful woman, you know? Yep. 
She is. And uh, when I had her managing, I had her managing all the Amazons. I mean, all, all the Amazon, all the Annie Man. Mm-hmm. I think just, I did too. Not just Wolf. Here's the color version of her from the wiki. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much how I had her. Yeah. To me, she's always been Phil Singer Games Wonder Woman. Yeah. And by the time she got to like this artwork, that was pretty obvious that that's what they were going for. <laughs> I have the original of this somewhere. Oh, you might have actually, the art? Yeah, I might actually be in with an arm reach here. I mean, watch me knock everything else over. They're just Funkos. It's okay. There, there it is. Huh. Hannibal King right there. Good old Hannibal. I got some original Hannibal art, but it's from Magic. Oh, yeah? And he drew he drew a... Uh, a Superman for me. Cool. And I have a uh, an autograph book, and he drew it in there. He's a he pretty was, good guy. He yeah, he was a, one of the better con guests as far as art and stuff goes because he he drew all day for everybody. Yeah. But yeah, that's. I, I just realized I showed that off whenever I was in a tiny little corner, <laughs> <laughs> sharing my screen. But yeah, there's the original art. We won this at the first Philadelphia Galacticon auction. Yeah, I have... Who do I got for original? I have 10 drawn. I have myself. I got my original art. Mm -hmm. I have a Lord Nexus that Bendis did. Okay. And I have the Overkill. Nice. And I have a K, the original Chaos somewhere. Cool. I don't know where I've looked all over for that because Todd Rochelle has been bugging me about that. For a, so I'm like, I got it. I don't know where. Hopefully, I didn't get lost. I don't oh, know. I just have that and Troy Boy. But hey, getting back to, to Amazonia here, mm -hmm. uh, she like she still manages for me. I'm in 2105, so she still manages. Okay. Uh, the the any men have changed like it's wolf she manages mandrill now okay wolf mandrill zoe mongo and iron main is it iron no can't be iron main is it iron main pulos <laughs> yeah, maybe <laughs> yeah i think, like. I think it's he's from the yeah. ngo sets yeah so she manages those four. But because uh, uh, Mandrill just came bumped up and he's part of the Annie Men. And uh, so it's kind of an uneasy alliance between him and Wolf because the Annie Men have, have lo been losing their feud against war. Okay. And so. Hey, brought in another of, hitter. Yeah. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Mm -hmm. And so he, he's there. So he's kind of got his own guy in Sentry. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to work that probably into a storyline and I'll eventually turn the Anyman back to back to faces they've always kind of been written even as an in-between team Yeah, they were those bad guys that if you needed something done or the, those good guys if you needed something a little you know a little off the record kind of thing done you would call the Anyman <laughs> but she's she's done quite well she'll be when she retires she'll be in the Hall of Fame for a manager easy mm-hmm like she's captured four GWF heavyweight titles. Three were Wolf. One is Battering Ram. Okay. Three TV titles. I think all three of those were Iron Maid. Five Intergalaxian titles. And I think one of those was Badger. Four were Wolf. War Games Tag, which was, I think, uh, Ram and, and uh, Badger. GWF tag title twice, which was Ram and Badger and Iron Maiden and Badger. And Intergalaxian tag, which was Ram and Badger. Oh. 
So she's she's done quite well, but not not with the new guys. The new guys just can't gain, gain any traction. Yeah. I, I, yeah. The, those original Animan, they were they were good. They were you know definitely the best tag team, and yep. Wolf was always hanging around that top good guy spot. So definitely a tough team. And Wolf is still you know competing for titles, but he's you know. Because the the inevitable power creep, yeah, he hasn't got creeped up yet. I know, he, mm -hmm. I know, he eventually does. Yeah, yeah, I think he gets like fourteen more updates. <laughs> he just won't go away. Yeah. He he's uh, Phil Singer Games is Wolverine, I think. <laughs> doesn't age, doesn't you know? Just always around, which is fine. This is a sci-fi game, and he is an alien from, of a different race. But as for that card, though, um, I, I did do the whole uh, when she first came in, she was pursued by uh, Renard Beguile in that creepy, yeah, that creepy fashion. Mm -hmm. If there's any guy that's creepy and would bother a woman, it would definitely be Renard Beguile. Oh yeah, and you know it, it worked out great because he 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 did look like a creep. Mm -hmm. And uh, but she was also the one who could just you know knock him on his ass. Yeah, and that's that's how I had it. Mm -hmm. so she didn't have stats, but I had her more than a few times. Just you know, she slugs him and he drops. <laughs> yeah, he's listed as five seven one hundred and forty two pounds. <laughs> yeah, I had her at five eight one fifty, so I had her short, like not short, but that's tall for a woman five eight. Let's see what she's her official listing. That was uh but I had her muscular, so one that's why the 150. Yeah, she's five eight hundred and thirty okay. officially. So yeah. She's tall. Yeah. Yeah, that like there's not too many storylines you can really run with a, a manager with no stats or anything. Right. Like you can't but do I, the mixed tag and all that. But I mean I also had her be very smart manager wise. Like, you know, I, I told the story where Wolf got hurt and he had to give up his heavyweight, his, his title shot. But, you know, she comes forward, excuse me, and says, Hey, Wolf may not be able to do it, but I still have a stable of wrestlers. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, battering ran. So defend the title on his behalf? Well, not, not defend, but challenge for the title. Okay. Okay. And yeah, Battering Ram, because I thought out of Iron Maiden, Incredible Badger, and Battering Ram, I thought Battering Ram was, he could have been a top guy, you know. He, he had the stats to be to be solid. Yeah, Badger was more the tag team guy. He had the tag finisher and stuff. Yeah, I, I can see that. Yeah. If, if Ram's finisher would have been a plus three, you know, uh, we're, we're jumping ahead, but he... he 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 could have had a, a nice singles run. Yeah, for sure. He just made him average. You know, they gave him a three later on, but but uh, yeah. So that's that's how I made her. I made her more of an actual manager mm -hmm. than other people may have given her credit for. Okay, wasn't a valet, so to, so to speak. No, no, she, yeah, well, wasn't arm candy. No. She she definitely was an arm candy. I, I made her like she she was smart. Mm -hmm. She she looked after you know her boys. Yeah, I like it. I like it. And she's a character that hung around a long time within the yeah. game lore. How do you use her? Pretty much the same. I had her with the entire anime as well. Um, I wasn't, and this is pretty common knowledge now. I'm not a wolf fan. But I was an Amazonia fan, so I would have I used her a lot with the other guys in that group, just because I liked them better, <laughs> and I liked her too, and I liked using using her as much as I could. So she managed that whole team. Um, like like we've said before, I didn't keep good records, so I couldn't tell you what title she led them to. Yeah, but I always remember them them being pretty pretty close to the top of the card all the time in the title picture because I liked them and I pushed them so. And she was a part of that equation, so definitely very successful for me as well. That's cool. 
And there's not much we can change about her because she's a manager. Well, I, we can increase that distractor rating is what we can do. <laughs> <laughs> the only option. If she had a six, which was, I think, the highest at the time other than Guile, right? Well, Gu- yeah, Guile was a seven. Uh-huh. And then she was a six, and then everybody else was fives. Mm-hmm. Which is now the standard for anybody at ringside now has a five. <laughs> the, any, ringside, any ringside ally is a five. So, yeah, she did... You know, for, for for that wise, you know, six back then, 50-50 shot of, of saving you, that was pretty good. Mm-hmm. For sure. Then we can pop into the Royal Overlord. Yeah, here he is right here. The Royal Overlord. Did they give him a purple cape in his color? Let's that's, take a look. That's, that's what color I made it. Let's it's take Roy, a look. Ah, you know, uh, you're gonna be disappointed. Purple, purple was one of the more more difficult colors to make, so that's why the royalty used it. Blue, you got a navy blue and a leather loincloth. <laughs> okay. I don't know if the if his reimagined card. I think his reimagined card has a purple cape. I see. The only thing that bothered me about this drawing is it doesn't look like he's got an elbow. I always thought that too. Or or and it looks like he has one leg as well. <laughs> it's kind of like his he stops here with a with a fist. Mm-hmm. This looks like how I draw. No, actually that's 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 insulting. It's it's much better than what I can draw. <laughs> Royal Overlord. Whichever whichever planet he comes from, all the all the all the uh, all the people just have little T Rex arms. It could be true. Nobody knows where he's from. He's listed from parts unknown, so yep. it could be true. And once you see it, you can't unsee it now. You just no. Like, <laughs> Son of a bitch, you've ruined it. <laughs> and I like how he has a flagpole. <laughs> as his weapon of choice. Yep. And but he he had a back. Yes, he did. He had stats. And his stats actually weren't horrible. No, but when, like I said, some people had manager belts and he would hold it. Yeah. Him and him, him and trainer Jim were probably the two the two toughest of the managers. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's got a plus three agility and power. C, but in everything but death jump, he's got a B in that. <laughs> but he's got a finisher. Uh, he can't keep you on level three, but um, he's not terrible. Like, I could see him winning, like, one in ten matches just by dumb luck. Against actual wrestlers? Yeah. I think I used him a few times, but not enough to... Uh, um, he'd be, he was like the Paul Ellering. Yeah, if you needed a six man or something. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. To me, he was always kind of irrelevant because, like, Thantos to me was always the leader of that team. Even though this guy was around, Thantos was still the leader. Yeah. Even of the royal court, whenever they kind of broke away. I still I used, see. I used him like I used, like, the, the horseman used James J. Dillon. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. You know, Flair, Flair was the leader. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Dylan kind of ran things behind the scenes. Yeah. And he was an extra set of set of eyes at ringside if need be and stuff. And and uh, I had Royal Overlord manage Santos. Cool. Cool. Me too. Just with the extra distraction. Yep. <laughs> he managed the whole group. It was like mm-hmm. two different factions. Dylan yeah. Was on his own. And then the Royal Court was over here. Uh-huh. But they were always always in, aligned to me at yeah. least. Yeah. Oh, I just got booted from the site. Let me get back in. Sorry. But um, yeah, he was cool. He was he was somebody that you know, he had his role to play. Yeah. And um, like he's, I, I like that James J. Dillon comparison because that's very spot on with that, even how I played him. Yeah, like he he did. He did pretty good. He'll 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 be a, you know he's a Hall of Famer. 
because of his association with Thantos? Well, only two GW heavyweight twice. So Thantos won a lot of his titles. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Thantos had, didn't keep him for very long. Okay. I think at one point Thantos moved on to Omega. I had Thantos switch early, so Omega got the majority of Thantos' title range. <laughs> Thantos is the best of all time. Uh, two, two, two TV titles, four Intergalaxian singles, one Galaxian title, uh, one, one, oh, two IG tag, which was Mad as Hell, Bishop Hell, and Mad Jester. Nice. And War Games tag, which was probably Bishop Hell and Mad Jester. The Galaxian was probably Killer Queen. The IG singles was probably Bishop Hell and I think maybe one Exo King run. Okay. The TV, same thing. I think that was uh, uh, Exo King, probably. Yeah, he, he was... I, I liked him. I Because... I, I thought the Royal Court was a great idea. It was. It was. I know Sam Liptak is a big fan of the Royal Court, and he's he's done different incarnations of them throughout the years, which have always been kind of cool. Because right, there's so much you can do. You have the yeah. Jester, the bishops, you know, the mm -hmm. king, the queens. For sure. You know, the, the count. Mm -hmm. the necros and, you know, technically the Duke of Destruction. Yeah, he was, he was that other guy that... Got written in, retconned in. So they're all, they're all things, and you could easily replace them, or you can have more than one count, or more than exactly, one. like or another duke, or a prince, or you know whoever. You know, there's, there's the possibilities are endless with that that faction and what you can do. Yeah, like when I had when I had uh, my bootleg fed, mm -hmm. I had uh, from Mark Ashby. He he made a royal court. Uh huh. And he made a guy called Kingpin. <laughs> no. And uh, Prince Zales. And mm -hmm. they were a tag team. I, and so I borrowed Ro Rob's Royal Overlord and he managed them. Mm -hmm. Nice. Because so, yeah, there was just so much you could do with the royalty. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Warrior. And they just brought him back in the most, well, not the most recent, I think it was two years ago, they brought back a version of the Royal Court. A new Exo King and Killer Queen and Death Knight. And he even managed Mesmer when Mesmer turned bad because he was the court magician. Ah. So Mesmer. Yeah, I, had, I had it all, you know, <laughs> I, I, I liked using it because there was just so much I could do with that. that yeah. The whole stable. Mm-hmm. It's fun. I like when you can spin a lot of guys out of on one theme, which is kind of what they did with this. Like, even if in the official cards without bootlegs, they they hit on so many different things. Yeah, which now is kind of cool. He retired when I did my uh, my war games. Where mm -hmm. Instead of retiring wrestlers, I retired managers. Yeah, so that's not how he ended up getting retired. Yeah, he hung around to win. 2102 in official card years. That's probably. Uh, I had him go in. Yeah, I can't remember. I think 2103, I think. Okay. Or something like that. Yeah, yeah. He got updated in 2098. Became the occult overlord. Yeah. That's probably when Mesmer joined him. Mesmer and Bishop Hell became a tag team for me. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's about. Yep, Mesmer joined the team in 2098, so that would make sense. Yeah, just because on my little card, I also keep the wrestlers he managed prior to him uh, leaving. So year okay. by year, so I knew. So his final year, it was Mesmer, Bishop Hill, and Mad Jester. Uh huh. They were the final wrestlers he managed. Mesmer always looked like an evil dude. We talked about that before, though, but. <laughs> There's no surprise when he turned. No. <laughs> it was those creepy fingernails. <laughs> and the fact that, you know, he was master, master of the occult. <laughs> yeah. Not the dark arts or anything like that. <laughs> the occult. 
so, so many good things you can think of the occult on all, all they do. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but he used his powers for good for a little while. And uh, yeah, there's not much you can do to improve him except, you know, make that distractor a six. Right. <laughs> but you can improve on his wrestling stats a little bit, I guess. Yeah, but I, <laughs> I said before, I never used manager's stats. They they rarely entered the ring for me. Yeah, but but you got to think about when these cards were originally released back in the eighties. Oh, yeah. That was a staple in the territories. Like, oh, if you beat me, you get my you get cornet in the ring for five minutes or whatever. You know, well, I, just... I told you, I told you, I did that once. And it was mm-hmm. trainer Jim and, and mutant in a cage, and it was such a horrible bloodbath. <laughs> five minutes of. Into the cage. Yeah. <laughs> Into the cage. <laughs> <laughs> Poor trainer, Jim. Yeah. yeah. The only thing I said I, I can improve on him, I wouldn't worry about his back because I'd never used them. Yeah. Like that. They probably saw the odd match where it was, you know, like a, uh, where, you know, I, I would do it like a Survivor Series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that'd be about the only time to use this guy. I use Trainer Jim a lot as a wrestler. He just seems like like he could handle himself just based on his artwork. He was a younger guy, you know, big. (laughs) But yeah, that's how I use him. That's pretty much how you used him too. Just yeah, same. Like he was always Santos' second, and. uh, like I said, he wasn't real. He was the de facto leader. Santos was the real leader. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's a, he, was, he was an interesting cat. How old would you say this guy is? Uh, I put him in his uh, early 50s. Okay. But because he was so jacked. <laughs> <laughs> He reminded me a lot of. Uh, see, I didn't give him the black. I didn't give him white. A, a white stash. I, I never pictured it gray. Uh-huh. So I figured he was. He was uh, just because he, he was so jacked. I, I figured he was like a, a wrestler, and this is how I kind of th- thought about him, who suffered like a back injury or something. And they retire early. Yeah. Yeah, but they could still go if he needed to. It's like Paul Ellering or Paul Jones. Yeah. You know, guys who he, he was an ex wrestler just never made it. Mm-hmm. That's how I wish I stuff like that was written to the stories more because yeah. that happens all the time in, yeah. in the real world. You know, maybe I'll have to play up with that on some bootleg stuff. Just, but that's that's how I that's how I use used him. Mm-hmm. Cool. I, I mean, yeah, I liked that whole team, and he was he was cool to have. You know, but like I said, Thantos was the leader. Yep. Okay. Since you know we, we not, not much you can do to mother than increase that distractor to a six. Yeah, or a seven if you want to go crazy. Yeah, that, that'd be a little nuts. <laughs> or an eight. <laughs> but we'll talk about our uh, our wrestling cards. Yeah. What was the first indie show you ever went to? First indie show I ever went to was the United States Wrestling League at Beaver Falls High School. And it was headlined by Lord Zoltan versus the Juicer. Oh. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then countless indie shows beyond that. Like well, I was I, I was so happy when Lord Zoltan Lord, Lord Lord Zoltan was added to the game in the in the last Legends black and white set. I was so pumped. I know Tim Dalton's a big Zoltan fan, so it was I'm sure it was his influence getting him in there, but uh, I've never heard of the guy. He's awesome. <laughs> yeah, he still wrestles occasionally. He does a lot of charity shows. He all his children are deaf, so he does a lot of benefit shows that um, benefit deaf charities. So yeah, he's he still go. I, I, I don't know if he does anymore. It's been a couple years probably since I've seen him do anything, but up until recently, he was still going. I don't think it was the real juicer. I think it was a fake juicer. 
<laughs> doing like the Beetlejuice art yeah. bar? No, no, I don't think I, I, this guy had a mask. He had silly string because I know WCW had a juicer, didn't they? Yeah, it was Art Bar. Yeah, I don't think it was him. <laughs> I think someone just took the name. Bat, Batman was also on that show. Huh. Um, a guy named the Big Cheese, which I loved. <laughs> he was the big bad guy who was just like laced throughout the show. He kept, you know, like interfering in different things and trying to manipulate the, the show in different ways. And he got beat up at the end. Yeah. My first indie show, uh, I, I don't even know who who put it on, uh, but it was kind of stacked. Oh, yeah? We had the wild man who wrestled a bear. Nice. We had the wrestling bear. Um, we had the original Sheik. Cool, cool. Uh, he wrestled Crazy Chris Colt. It was another oh. nut job, and they had like a wild anything goes brawl throughout the. People were literally running for their <laughs> lives. Like, she <laughs> is throwing fireballs at the crowd. I'm 12 years old. This is insane. This guy threw, was throwing fireballs into the fans. And <laughs> that reminds me. Do you remember when we were in Cleveland and they had that hardcore match? Uh, it was a six man tag, and they were brawling through the crowd, and everybody scattered, and we just stood there, and they didn't know what to do. <laughs> and the announcer got on the microphone and goes, "Can you guys do us a favor? When the wrestlers come towards you, could you just get out of their way? Thank you." <laughs> and we're like, "Oh, okay, sorry." <laughs> Because we, we were tall, we were like a foot taller than all the guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I got to be scared of this five foot, 840 pound guy. Right. <laughs> yep. I'll never forget that. That was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then the feature match was a, a steel cage match between Ricky Johnson and Sweet Daddy Seeky. Nice. That is a stacked card. Yeah. No, the only problem was they couldn't get the steel cage to stay <laughs> up on the ring. Oh no! So they put it on the floor. So they so were the taller than the cage. Went to the top of the top rope. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I hey, at least you got to give them credit for the effort, though. I don't think I've yeah. ever seen any of the local indies here try and do a steel cage. But this is the funny part: is it's also I, that's also the card I discovered pro wrestling. Wasn't on the up and up. Yeah. <laughs> I was in grade six or seven. And for me, it was 100% real. Like uh -huh. everything was real. I believed everything. Yeah. And then Ricky Johnson comes off the top rope with a double axe handle to Sweet Daddy and misses him by about eight inches. <laughs> Sweet Daddy sells it like he's been shot. <laughs> and I remember I was front row. I got yeah. front row tickets, and I'm watching that, and it was like somebody punched me in the gut. Yeah. I think I, I might have talked about this at one point. <laughs> Boom. I was uh, like, I literally sat in my seat, and I couldn't move. I was like, it just hit me all at once. I was Yeah, like, yeah. And I uh, grew up in an era where it had already been exposed. Yeah, see, and it, it just crushed me. I remember I was just – I was depressed, like even – like. I couldn't care less that the match was even going on. I, I don't even know who won it. That's how oh, much no. I was. <laughs> but years later, I'm, I'm on a card. And Ricky Johnson's there. <laughs> I, I got to know, I've gotten, I've gotten to know Ricky over the years. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, I'm going to tell him this story. <laughs> and he knew the match. As soon as I said where the steel cage went from the floor to the top rope, he's like, I know that match. <laughs> and I'm like, you did a double axe handle to Sweet Daddy. I said... You didn't hit it, and he sold it. And I said, I said, and I was, you know, I said, and it absolutely crushed me. Like it, it was soul crushing. <laughs> I believed wrestling was real till I saw that. What does Ricky do? He starts laughing at me. He's like, oh, he's like, hold on, hold on. Gets out his cell phone. And he calls Sweet Daddy, <laughs> and he's like, hey, Seeky baby. He's like, you got to listen to this story. <laughs> <laughs> he puts me on the phone with Sweet Daddy <laughs> and makes me tell the story to him. And they're both laughing at me, like tears in their eyes laughing. And I'm like, oh, this is so humiliating. <laughs> uh, are both those guys still alive? Are they still oh, with yeah. us? Good, good. I, I did a 
um, when Smith was still alive, mm-hmm. he had a he had a basically a, a farewell dinner. Uh huh. And so he invited a few of us out. So I, I went out with I went out with him, and I posted it on my Facebook uh, years ago. Mm-hmm. And it's a picture. I'm in the middle, and I got Smith on one side and and uh, Ricky Johnson on the other. Uh huh. And we're just all hanging out, you know, post for the picture. And it was Smith's last picture. Like he's, he probably died four months later from cancer. Mm -hmm. And in the picture, we're all goofing around. And at the last moment, he goes, he he looks over. He's like, Smith had a very, just a dry sense of humor. Uh And he goes, look at you guys. He goes, you guys are just assholes. He goes, I'm dying of cancer. And he goes, you guys are just laughing about it. And it just makes us start laughing. And he's looking miserable as hell. And he's doing it on purpose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the picture's taken. <laughs> and we're both, we're, we're, we're both laughing. We're like, yeah, we look like assholes now. <laughs> nice. That, that, was my first, that was my first indie show. Now, I've been to... Fuck, I, I wrestled on a thousand. <laughs> right. <laughs> I've probably been to close to a thousand of them. It used to be really big, like in the mid '90s here in the Pittsburgh area. There were a ton of indies going, like every weekend. If you wanted to, you could go to two or three shows. It's not like that anymore. But um, yeah, I remember I've seen so many people, like Superfly, Jimmy Snuka was on. Boy, I've seen Bushwhackers. I've seen just at, like local high schools and stuff like that. Yeah, but um, trying to think who, some other. Nothing, nothing like that with a steel cage or anything like that. <laughs> like we didn't, we weren't that spoiled. But uh, yeah, yeah there, there's a, a promotion, and it was run by the Wild Man, the guy who puts on, uh, who wrestled the bear. It was his yeah. promotion, and it was funny because you'd see in, in the, in, and I've, I've some of my pictures that are on my Facebook page. I posted them a while ago, and it's got a picture of Ric Flair body slamming Bob Backlund. <laughs> On, on the on the poster and i'm like this is gonna be on the card <laughs> nope <laughs> oh <laughs> that, um, that's cool i couldn't tell you that the other guys who were on the show mm-hmm. like there was i think machine gun mike kelly or something like that yeah uh now this is going back you know 1985 i think uh-huh. So yeah, a long, long time ago to, to, to remember some guys on an indie show. <laughs> right, I hear you. I remember I saw um he was he was advertised as being on the show as Johnny Polo, and it was Raven, and he came out as Raven. And I think it might have been the first time he was ever Raven. He just tried it out on an indie show that we were at, and he bought, I think, Virgil or somebody. And uh everyone seemed to like it and then like a month later he's on ecw as raven huh. it's like why are you going by raven we went up to his merch table he's like i don't know he's like <laughs> can't be johnny polo so <laughs> what was your first uh like big promotion i went to a wwf show at the ccbc golden dome and it was back at the time where they would do like three shows a night And they would send, like, half the tag team champions. Like, they sent Jacques of the Quebecers to this show, and he fought Rick Steiner because at the other show, Pierre was fighting Scott Steiner, (laughs) you know. And so um, we got the – I think we were, like, the C show that was in town that day because they did the Civic Arena, the Golden Dome, and um, Hershey, whatever that arena is. But um, they would do that, like, every few months. And I remember I saw Kevin Nash there as Diesel for the first time. And this dude had the duck. It seemed like a foot <laughs> to get through the door to the entranceway. It was just like a basketball locker room door. And I was standing next to him. I've never seen a person that big in my life before. <laughs> you know, it was, it was amazing to me. I was like probably 10, 11 years old, probably at the time. And I was like, I was just blown away by the, the size of this man, you know. And uh, he he was in the main event against. Oh, who did he fight in the main event? But it was right when he was just getting there, because it was supposed to be Shawn Michaels versus Razor Ramon for the Intercontinental Title, but Shawn Michaels wasn't there. He was at the Pittsburgh show, the uh, you know the 
Civic Arena show. So Diesel was there representing him, and he fought Razor Ramon instead. I think is what it was. No, my first my first show, I did a WWF show in a boat. 88, 89. Kurt Henning was the IC champ. Okay. And Hogan was challenging him for it. Really? Yeah. So Hogan had lost the WWF title to the Ultimate Warrior. Okay. And Hogan had Mr. T in his corner. Uh, Kurt Henning had uh, Leap and Lenny, the genius. Yeah. And it ended up just being a, 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 like a disqualification. Yeah, because they're not going to put the Intercontinental title on Hogan. <laughs> yeah. um, but what, the, the coolest match, you had the Midnight Rockers uh -huh. against the Hart Foundation. Nice. It was a 20-minute draw. Those guys, you heard the story about how their Saturday night main event match got, got axed, right? Because the top rope broke. They, they were on the first Saturday night main event. They had a, because it was taped, and they had a match, and the top rope broke, and the Rockers actually beat them for the tag titles, but it never happened because they didn't air it on TV. Uh. <laughs> because the top rope broke. And like Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels both talked about it, like, we wrestled a pretty good match for not having ropes. Because <laughs> yeah, when you lose the top one, you can't do a whole lot with the ropes. No. <laughs> that, 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 that happened to me in an actual match. Really? Uh, I was wrestling EWF. I was wrestling Billy Boogie. And we were the very first match in this brand new promotion. Mm -hmm. And the guy dumped a lot of money into it. And it was a great ring. It was a 21 by 21 ring. It was WC, you know, like the guy got the blueprints from WCW for their rings. Yeah, yeah. The ring was best ring I've ever been in a, for, for Indy. And uh, the top ring, bloop, just dropped. Oh, no. Billy was supposed to do like 12 minutes. <laughs> and in the first minute and a half, the uh, the top rope breaks. And I had been working about three years at this point. Billy had only been working about a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember because Billy's got me in a in a um like a, a side headlock, and he's and he's you know. Oh no! Yeah, he's got me. He's stretching my arms out at the at the back, and he's asking the ref, you know, "Hey, ask him if he gives." And I look down and I see the rope in the middle of the ring, so I just hook it over with my foot, and I'm like, "Ref, I got the ropes." <laughs> and, the ref, and the the ref actually looks and he goes, "Goes to Billy one," <laughs> and Billy has to break it, and we're in the center of the ring. <laughs> And then Billy, you know, he lets me go, but then Billy grabs the ropes and starts choking me with the ropes. <laughs> and you got to do. just used it. Make the best of a bad situation. Yeah. And then after the match, they, they fixed it. But, but yeah, on this card, uh, you had Hillbilly Jim versus Virgil. Uh, nice. That was a Matt classic. Yeah. Uh, Paul Roma was fighting... Uh, SD Jones. <laughs> it's when you, they still had, you know, the, the jobber matches as well. Yeah. Uh, Hacksaw, Jim Duggan. This is at Cops Coliseum. Mm -hmm. But this is the one thing I remember is after the show, I'm just standing by a merch table with with, with the friend and his his my buddy's friend and his mom are at the at the merch table looking at t-shirts, and you know I'm. 6'6", six, six, and Martin, the guy I'm with, is 6'6", six, six, and in walks, right between us, Mr. T and Hulk Hogan. <laughs> and, you know, you're a tall guy, too. You you know when you're you're taller than someone? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I'm taller than Hulk Hogan. <laughs> he's not 6'8". No he's 6'7". <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think Kevin Nash was a legit 7' foot tall, though. Oh, yeah. Um, trying to think. My first pay per view event that I went to was SummerSlam 1995, which was the main event was King Mabel versus Diesel for the uh, WWF Championship. Yeah, it was it was during the dark days of uh, WWF, but it had the uh, the ladder match rematch between Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon from WrestleMania that year. That was good. Shawn Michaels won that. Then there, Bret Hart versus uh, Isaac Yankum was on that card. 
And then uh, one, two, three kid versus Hakushi, which I think was probably the match of the night. Trying, trying to think who else was on that show. It was a pretty forgettable pay-per-view, especially for a SummerSlam. <laughs> but I was also at King of the Ring 98 with the infamous um, Hell in the Cell match between Mick Foley and The Undertaker, where he oh. threw him off the, off the top of the cell. I was there for that. I need to get to a Survivor Series because then I can say I've been to all four of the uh, big four WWF pay-per-views. I've been to a SummerSlam, a Royal Rumble, a WrestleMania, but I haven't been to a Survivor Series yet. I've been, uh, I went to WrestleMania 18. That was a good one. That was Hogan and The Rock, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because on the way down, I, I, I went with Tim Dalton. And... Uh, I can never remember his name. He, he wrestles for Impact right now. He's the head of Violent by Design. Uh, with Eric Cody. Young? Eric Young. So me and Eric Young took the subway down together. Mm -hmm. And because uh, Eric lived in Cambridge. Uh, and uh, we just ran into each other at the, at the, at the, the, the subway. Because we used to take it. There's a, a mall about 20 minutes from me. So you take the mall and the subway goes right into the Sky Dome. Nice. And so that's what we that's what we do, and I just end up seeing Eric, and hey, so we just sat down and chatted the whole way down. Mm -hmm. And uh, so yeah, that's that's been my only pay per view. Really? Yeah. Well, we don't get as many pay per views up here as you guys do. That's <laughs> true. Well, Toronto gets a good bit. No, no, we've had two. Uh, I think we had a, a Survivor Series or something once. Mm -hmm. We had the very first King of the Ring mm -hmm. in Hamilton. And, uh, or, yeah, yeah, first King of the Ring? I guess yeah. Sky Dome. The Sky Dome's too big to run, like, a monthly pay-per-view at. You'd have to run, like, a Mania yeah, or something. It's, it's uh, you know, e even at the ACC. We saw it at the ACC. Mm -hmm. The first one, WrestleMania Six, was at... At the Sky Dome, the second one was at the ACC. Okay. And uh, but the, a neat one or two. I went to an ECW pay per view in Buffalo. Nice. When I just started training. Mm hmm. And it was at the Burt Flickinger Center. And so I'm standing there, and one of my buddies that I was going down with was on crutches. And so ECW crowd is just you know. It was free for all seating. Yeah. So yeah. everybody just ganged around the doors. Uh huh. So we just got it. We're like, even if we got to sit up high, James is going to get his leg broke because you can't, you know, can barely. Yeah. Stand. Right. Especially if that we just, we just kind of hung out the back and we saw, we saw uh, Rick Rude. And the, one of the guys with Jeff, he's like, I want to go get his autograph. He brought an autograph book. <laughs> oh, okay. So we go up and Rick Rude's out back and it's just him. And he's like, hey, can we get an autograph? And he signed, I didn't bring anything, but Jeff's got his book and he signs Jeff's book. And then all these other wrestlers start coming into the back door. And these two guys show up and they're both 6'10. And uh, they play basketball at the Burt Flickinger Center. So we got to talking to him, you know, hey, you know, we told him we're training. And uh, that's why I got to meet Terry Funk. He, you know, he was nice, but I felt so bad just trying to watch him walk. Like, yeah, he's doing steps one at a time. Mm -hmm. like, man, I just want to ask him, hey, just, I'll piggyback you up the stairs, dude. Just, but when he got in the ring, though, he could still go. Yep. Even in the 90s, he could still go. And uh, so we're with these guys for about half an hour. And then mm -hmm. the guy goes, hey, he goes, I, I can get us in ahead of, ahead of everybody. Because I know all the security because I play basketball here. He goes, <laughs> you guys want to come in with us? He goes, because we're, you know, we're getting in early. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 what, what do they call it? Seating where you can just. General admission. General admission seating. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, sure. So the four of us, we go in and the guy, you know, goes to the security guard. Yeah. And he goes, everybody got your tickets? Yeah. And it's funny. We're going and people are like, oh, they must have won a contest. <laughs> no, we were just nice to people. <laughs> yeah. We're from Canada. We're always nice to people. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so we I gotta, go ahead. We got Sorry. In. Nice. And uh yeah, we were like, where are we sitting? No, the, the four seats you had to pay for. Mm -hmm. So we're up top. 
And I remember after the show, I'm buying a shirt and I'm buying a Shane Douglas shirt. You're was, right in Pennsylvania zone. I was a huge Shane Douglas fan. Uh huh. And the Eliminators come up. Uh, and I'm talking to uh, not Perry Saturn, the other one, John Cronus. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I like John Cronus's work. I thought for a big man, he could. Yeah, he, could he did a lot of stuff. And I remember he comes up and I'm buying my shirt and he's like, oh, you don't want one of my shirts? <laughs> I'm like, sorry, I only brought so much American money and I was for one shirt. Uh -huh. and, uh, but yeah, he was getting his take and I talked to him. I'm like, hey, great match. And he was like, you really liked it? And I'm like, yeah. And so it was just kind of neat. That was my first time actually talking to like a guy I've seen on TV. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Shane. And he sat and talked to me for about three minutes. Not sat, but stood there and talked yeah, to me yeah. for three minutes just. Mm -hmm. how i like the show and what i liked about the show yeah and, and that's what ecw did right they made their talent accessible like they would hang around and talk to people and stuff and you know just be cool with with the fans and stuff like that and i think that's why they had such a great underground following yeah no i know a lot of it it's the same thing you, you, you pump the fans mm -hmm. you know you're nice to them they're gonna hey yeah i'll buy a shirt now that dude was awesome yeah exactly exactly um, I have a funny ECW Terry Funk story. I was going to an ECW show at the CCBC Golden Dome and a car pulls up next to us. It was me and my friends. Window goes down. A guy leans out, spits out a dip and goes, where the F is the CCBC Golden Dome? And it's Terry Funk. I said, we're going there. Follow us. <laughs> so I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> they used to run promos in the Pittsburgh markets where he would actually talk crap on New Brighton, Pennsylvania, because that's where Shane Douglas is actually from. And that's where I'm from. And uh, he would get on just the, the Pittsburgh version of the ECW. And there would just be promos where he was talking down New Brighton, Pennsylvania. And I, I, I wish I had them recorded because it was hilarious. <laughs> he's like, I'm not talking about Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's a nice city. I'm talking about where that, where he's really from. <laughs> Okay, but we should we should probably wrap some stuff up here. Mm -hmm. Next week we got uh, Mad Jester and the Galactic Punisher. Mm -hmm. We're talking about GWF wrestlers we just hate. Okay, <laughs> yeah. And there's a, there's a possibility we have a special guest. We don't know yet. We, we won't shout up. anybody out just in case we can't get it to work out. But yeah. But he knows who he is. Mm -hmm. he's, he's trying to work his schedule around it. Yep. Hopefully we can make it happen. If not, we'll, we'll figure out something later for him. Yep. But yeah, uh, thank you for tuning in, everybody. Uh, check out the links below to all of our buddies who are doing Phil Singer Games related content here on YouTube and everywhere else. All the links are in the description. You got the podcast, the Roll Up podcast, Uncharted Territory. GWF Promoter, all of them are listed there. Dizzy Dice, please check them out. The YouTube channels as well. And everything else that we have listed there. And if you have not yet, give us a like and a subscribe. That'll help us get some more visibility on YouTube. And like we always say, support these other projects people are doing, getting the word out about this game. Because the more people that get into it, the more fun we can all have together. I just briefly showed some bootlegs that I got in the mail from Oh, Butcher. I missed it. I was I was reading stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I only have one monitor. I'm sorry. That didn't want to give too much away. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. We're gonna do another bootleg episode here in the near future. Yep. Um, on, yep, for sure. Uh, Kevin makes some good stuff. Thomas Keenan's made some good stuff, and uh, we glossed over that stuff. Unfortunately, on our first bootleg show, we're gonna talk about it more on an upcoming one. Because it's worth mentioning. Yep. Awesome. Hockey playoffs are starting soon, so go Blues. Yeah, let's go Pens. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Good night, everybody. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Have a good night.